Okay. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I am uh, Dr. Kasim John, the immediate past president of the Pakistan Academy of Sciences, and I have been uh, invited to just uh, conduct the first uh, session, the inaugural session. I would like to welcome you all for participation uh, to this ASA EAS and IAP webinar series, third and last gathering on pandemic preparedness, science, and countermeasures. Uh, with these uh, introductory comments, we begin the proceedings with a recitation from the Holy Quran. Thank you. In the name of Allah, the entirely merciful, the especially merciful. Say, I seek refuge in the Lord of Daybreak. From the evil of that which He created. And from the evil of darkness when it settles. And from the evil of the blowers in knots. And from the evil of an envier when he envies. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, um, we start now with the invitation to Professor Khalid Mahmood Khan, President of the Pakistan Academy of Sciences, to give a welcome address to all of you. Certain vaccinations are not acceptable to certain countries. 
therefore it's will be to universally accepted by all countries under the UN Charter. It is uh, still not clear that where the pandemic, the second part I'm talking about is that it's not clear that when the pandemic originated. Therefore, strict biosafety and biosecurity measures have to be observed by the scientific laboratories, especially the biology labs. Thirdly, let me recommend it is not vaccine, but vaccination, which will end the pandemic. Therefore, vaccination programs have to be strengthened. And difficulties like transportation and uh, lesser drug areas and old chain have to be removed. Being vaccinated does not mean that we ignore other SOPs like wearing masks, frequently washing hands, strict uh, social distancing, and avoiding long gatherings. I hope that the today's webinar will also add to our knowledge with eminent speakers from different countries. I welcome you all again to enjoy the today's scientific discourse. I, in the end, I would like to thank Dr. Khan and Dr. Sobhaya and the team at Boss who have organized these seminars very successfully and constantly and connected so many people and scientists from outside who came to as speakers or moderators. I thank you all once again. Thank you and God bless. Thank you, Professor Khalid Mahmoud Khan. Uh, there is a slight bit of change in the schedule. We thought that it would be nice if Professor Zafar Khan Shinwari gives you uh, a brief on what has been going on in these uh, brand, uh, series of uh, webinars. So before I invite Professor Kim, I would like to uh, invite Professor Zafar Khan Shinwari for a brief presentation. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Professor Khalid Mahmoud Khan, uh, Professor Qasim Jan, both the, the current and the immediate past presidents, the Sabar Hayat, the great man, thanks for doing all the hard and good work and wearing us out for many hard meetings that we had. Professor Kim and uh, Professor Lee from ASA, uh, great. My dear friends, Vector, today I'm grateful to Russian Academy of Sciences, they are uh, participating us, and also Kong uh, Nam from Vietnam, uh, we are from Kyrgyzstan, we are from Iran today. So it's a good news that we have so many good friends together. Please, uh, uh, slides. Uh, what I'm going to tell you today is a little bit about what happened and what we planned. Uh, that, that's what uh, uh, where I would need the attention of the leadership of Pakistan Academy of Sciences as well as ASA and IJP. So what we did so far uh, is in this one slide. The story so far, what was the Please keep the first slide. Uh, so if you look at here, it looks like a dream come true. Uh, from the preparedness and counter measure, look at the title that we told in the first and two seminars, the webinar, uh, that were from role of science leaders to women, gender issues, to mental health, to uh, different countries' perspectives, including Nepal, Japan, Korea, now Korea uh, uh, Indonesia, and many other countries. And then we had uh, infodemic, one of the major, major issues that WHO is really concerned. It's not the main problem of vaccine and diagnosis and other, it is the misinformation, misinformation that we get through social media. We covered that a little bit. Artificial intelligence, privacy of individuals, ethics, uh, that was another issue that we really seriously looked at it. Then modern technologies, how can they help us? Uh, from data science, from uh, machine learning, from nanotechnology, uh, all this. And then webinar two, uh, we discussed 
thoroughly in Pakistan's perspective. Little bit of success that Pakistan had. Uh, we feel proud of it, uh, though we are not poor yet. But comparatively, when we look at the countries that are similar to us, Pakistan really uh, behaved little bit in a better sense. So I think uh, it needs a cloud that we, we really, uh, yesterday I was feeling a bit happy, we brought it again down to 5%. So that is that we, uh, despite of poverty, another thing that we should uh, confront with. So we did that. Social financing, biosecurity, issues of the biosafety and security. Uh, then uh, uh, alternative medicine therapy, herbal medicine, teas, etc. Uh, one health concept, etc. Et so if you look at all this, this was really thanks to ASA. If Professor Kim is listening to me, this is because of you, Professor Kim. Uh, you, uh, I remember his email, he said, no way you return money, you have to do it. And then to the Pakistan Academy of Science. Tasawar and Khalid Mahmood Khan and Qasim Jan and all friends, those who pushed us and said, come on man, we can do it. And we did it. Grateful. Here I will go to a few more slides, but before that, uh, Professor Kim and Khalid Mahmood Khan, Tasawar, I have specifically for three of you, uh, we have I, I request you to consider one suggestion. We should keep on doing this thing every month at least once. Uh, what I propose to you is, because this pandemic has to go a long way, uh, it's not going to end immediately. You have to bear it out for at least a year, at least a year. This is uh, a student of science and I'm working internationally. I'm on a team of WHO uh, with UNESCO. We are having a webinar every week and we are discussing issues internationally. So I recommend that we keep on doing it. But financially, Professor Kim, we just need your permission that we use the savings. We will not need to ask you for more money. Uh, and rest, I ask the Tasawar and Khan Khan to, to cover the rest of the things if we need it. But otherwise, I propose we continue doing these uh, efforts for the next months to come, at least once a month, we can discuss issues we can make things more, uh, you know, uh, science with society and from society. That is the main mandate of the academy. So this is a proposal, uh, we can discuss it on uh, EU. A couple of more slides. This is not the first event of ASA. Uh, I, I appreciate uh, the leadership of ASA. Uh, we did it with uh, CAST, Korean Academy of Science and Technology. We did it with the Indonesian Academy of Science and Technology. We did it at the from Islamic World Academy of Sciences. So we are doing a lot with UNESCO, with WHO, as I said. We are having an association of federation of American scientists. We are involved with them. So we, this is all of you. Next, please. Uh, this is bit other issues that we, in what I am proposing for the future, we will be discussing issues of impact of GDP, poverty, social problems, and other issues that we have to integrate social sciences with the nature sciences. That is the need of the hour. And that is what I show you the slide so far, what happened in 2019 and 2020. This was the impact. This, this shows you in the letter I proposed with the new uh, event that we are proposing. We will be addressing these issues too. Uh, so, when we, when we say immunity, as, as said rightly by President uh, Khaled Mahmoud Khan, uh, that this may last in months. I mean, these vaccinations are not disappointing, so are not uh, a sort of a warning that these are the data, that these antibodies potency three months later, it was 17% only in UK study, and there were other antibody levels that were uh, continuously monitored. So, uh, the hard immunity concept today, I will be talking about this also. That uh, please, next please. So if we if we talk about hard immunity, please remember. Some people say there is no need of vaccine, and if, if we sacrifice few human beings. It will be okay. Come on, man, it is not possible. This is a picture. I'm not going into detail. Uh, you have to pay a huge price if you don't vaccinate. You have to vaccinate. And that is, I will be sharing with you a success story also. Uh, the third, that uh, now there is a, another uh, scientist working, such a vaccine that behaves like a virus, that, that will be spread through vaccine to people, and other people will be vaccinated automatically. So some crazy scientists, I will call it crazy, I'm sorry, I'm crazy too, being ill and they're to you. But that, that's another thing that's going on. 
scientists are working at a vaccine that spread like a disease. What would possibly go wrong? So that is that we want to use of science. That also we will address in the next issue. Professor Kim, I'm proposing you these issues that if you consider it. Uh, then I will be a little bit uh, today. Uh, we have two, three, four sessions in which we have another aspect that we should be talking about ethics, and that is utilitarianism. Ethics and COVID 19, priority allocating. When we talk about the doctrine of uh, this ethics, that is the action that the variety of their use for for the benefit of majority. That is what we, we preach, that is what we do, that is what, what my group of scientists internationally invest for. I'm the vice chair of that commission that we do and we preach for it. So the doctrine that an action is right is so far it promotes happiness and that the greatest happiness of the greatest number should be the guiding principle of the conduct. That is what we do. So, just a, a, a last one minute, sir, if uh, Kassim Jantar This was the price that we paid 100 years back. People are tired of uh, lockdowns and they pay huge price in 1918, a pandemic similar to this. So I stop here and I warn you that please, the basic principles you have to follow. And in the next session, I, I will continue with some more information that we have. So over back to my boss, uh, former president, Professor Dr. Kassim Jansen. The president of Khalsa, Professor Liu Hang Kim. Professor Kim, please. It's a great pleasure and privilege for me to express my full-hearted workers, moderators, and participants today. As a very remarks at the first webinar held on the 31st of March. So I will repeat more or less the same speech today. So, I will just emphasize that we are now facing the third wave of COVID-19 pandemic and the witnessing of great surge in the number of the confirmed cases and also in mortality. Especially worrisome are the situations in many Asian countries exemplified by India. Also, some of the most successful countries in containing the spread of, of the COVID-19 in Asia such as Taiwan and Vietnam, uh, re reporting hundreds of new cases every day. These facts clearly indicate that loosening of the quarantine measures on the part of the high-level policymakers and personal hygienic measures on the part of the general public are the enemies in the war against the COVID-19. We must not let our guard down until the COVID-19 is finally over. As one former, former American board baseball player said, the game is not over until it's finally over. Also, in the fight against the COVID-19 pandemic, the importance of vaccines cannot be overemphasized. The vaccine nationalists by the advanced countries until now is one of the major factors in containing the spread of COVID-19. Fortunately, there are some movements for temporarily suspending the intellectual property right in vaccine production, but the progress in this matter is not satisfactory. International organizations like WHO and WTO are urged to act more proactively in this matter. The fruits of science is neither a property of an individual nor only the advanced countries. All scientific inventions and discoveries are based upon efforts of numerous scientists all over the world. And the fruits must be shared equitably by humankind. Global brotherhood is greatly in need as never before. Thank you very much. Professor Kim for your nice comments. Uh, 
I now request Professor Kamal Anwar bin Abdullah. Is he is he here now? Okay. He's, I'm told that Professor Anwar is not here, so he's still up. He's uh, just a few words. Okay. But anyway, Professor Abdullah is is a is a very competent scientist, an excellent. Uh, doctor, 20 years ago he suggested some medicine for me when I was in an international conference and I very quickly recovered under his advice. He is also a great friend and a wonderful person. Too bad we would not have him, but such is life. Uh, with that, I now request, uh, is our, our minister here? I, I think we, we do have our minister, uh, Miss. Our Excellency is Atash Gul, who would give the inaugural address for this conference. Um, 
competencies and required equipment for effective and durable recommendations as an outcome from this webinar. Thank you. All of you have a good day. Well, I'm just making a sense for being able to patronize the activities of the Pakistan Academy of Sciences. Um, as you notice, she is holding a very important portfolio, the portfolio of humanity, so you can imagine the importance of her position. We are very thankful to her, and we hope that we will be benefiting from her generous availability and offers with passage of time. Thank you, Madam. With these, I would like to request Professor Asadur Hayat Sahib, the President, uh, the Secretary General of the Pakistan Academy of Sciences, for a note of thanks, please. This is Taj Gurwazi Sabha, Madam Minister, by climate change, Professor Dr. Khandar Mahmoussa, President of the Pakistan Academy of Sciences, Dr. Kim, President of ASA, Distinguished Guest, Participants, Ladies and Gentlemen, Assembly. It is indeed a matter of great pleasure and honor for me to present a vote of thanks at the inaugural ceremony of the webinar third, which is uh, organized through the joint efforts of the ASA and Pakistan Academy of Sciences. On a very important topic regarding pandemic, which is uh, held today at uh, Pakistan Academy of Sciences in Stockholm. Ladies and gentlemen, before I proceed to the formal vote of thanks, I would like to take the opportunity to give a very brief introduction about the Pakistan Academy of Sciences. The Pakistan Academy of Sciences initially was created by a group of eminent scientists in 1953. Soon after the independence of Pakistan, over the last uh, past 67 years, the Academy has emerged as the supreme scientific body in the country consisting of highly distinguished scientists, engineers, and researchers who have excelled in their respective fields and are elected in the academies as fellows. Members of the academies through stringent selection criteria approved by the general body of the Pakistan Academy of Sciences. At present, there are 82 fellows along with some uh, uh, foreign fellows too from different countries who have been selected to very stringent criteria. Out of these 82 Pakistani fellows, 23, in addition to these uh, 82, are the members of the academy who are uh, we can say the young members of the academy selected under the approved criteria by the general body. So what are the salient objectives of the Pakistan Academy of Sciences? Let me briefly describe few among these. What are the most important to promote higher studies and research in pure and applied sciences in Pakistan, to provide a platform for interaction among Pakistani and foreign researchers and technologists to carry out innovative research at the frontiers of science and technology across the globe, to facilitate a forum for dissemination and exchange of scientific knowledge through conferences, webinars, and seminars. Some of the crisp achievements of the Pakistan Academy of Sciences up to yet are the following. The Federal Higher Education Commission provides annual financial grant to the Academy for its scientific and academic activities and tracking operation. The Academy has been activated 
by the Ministry of Education, Government of Pakistan as one of its advisory bodies. To date, the Academy has signed MOUs with 20 academies of sciences across the globe. Over the past few years, Academy has played a great role in the institution's development. For example, let me mention about the few in this direction. A key laboratories of atomic and laser physics at National Center for Physics at Islamabad has been established. Microbial collection and identification facility at Kazan University and at R&D Biolaboratory at Preston Institute of Nanosciences and Technology of the Preston University Stamper. The Academy has great role for establishment of China Park Giant Research Center of Earth Sciences in Pakistan under the Road and Parent Initiative. The Academy has established a scientific advice to government to a unit or policy unit within the Academy for review, upgradation and development of policies of national concern. The Academy at present is publishing two science journals since its inception in the domains of physical and computational sciences as well as life and environmental sciences. The publication of a third flagship journal namely Pakistan Journal of Emerging Sciences and Innovative Technologies has been initiated this year to cover areas of applied sciences, engineering and innovative technologies. In the year 2020, the Planning Commission of Pakistan has granted a project worth part Pakistan rupees 810 million to the Academy for its upgradation and capacity building. Ladies and gentlemen, I now come to the prime part of the vote of thanks. First of all, on behalf of the Pakistan Academy of Sciences, I would like to thank Our Excellency Zartaru Wazir Sahiba, Federal Minister, Ministry of Climate Change, for sparing time to grace the occasion with our online address and to inaugurate the event. On behalf of the Pakistan Academy of Sciences, I take the opportunity to extend my deepest gratitude to the ASA and Inter Academy Partnership IAP for joining hands with the Pakistan Academy of Sciences to organize this webinar on a topic of serious concern for scientists, researchers, medical specialists and technologists who are engaged in developing vaccines, medicines, and technologies to combat the minimums of COVID-19 for the safety of mankind. For this, we wish to express our special gratitude to Dr. Kim President Asa and Professor Abdullah President Elect Asa for provision of valuable technical and financial support and guidance to Pakistan Academy of Sciences to organize the webinar in a successful and productive manner. My very special thanks are also due to Professor Dr. Khalid Mahmood, the present President of Pakistan Academy of Sciences, Professor Qasim Jan, the immediate ex-president of the Pakistan Academy of Sciences, and Professor Dr. Zabta Khanshadwari, who is Chief Organizer of the webinar series, for their continuous and gracious support and patronage to organize this webinar. Thanks are also due to foreign and local faculty of the webinar for sharing their knowledge and expertise at this webinar. We are indeed grateful to all the participants for their very active interest in the deliberations of this webinar. Ladies and gentlemen, I feel honored in thanking Professor Dr. Sartha Hanshanwari, former Secretary General of Pakistan Academy of Sciences and his team members, namely Ms. Kiran Kral, Muhammad Zia Khan, Nasir, Sajad Ali, Anza Malik, Hamza Wai, Ibrahim Khan, 
Dr. Deepak Qureshi and the technical staff of the Academy for their valuable inputs in organizing this seminar. Last but not the least, I am grateful to the moderators of the webinar for two technical sessions, namely Professor Dr. Masum Yasindi, Rector, International Islamic University, Islamabad, Major General Amari Ramsam, Executive Director, National Institute of Health, Islamabad, Professor Dr. Shahid Beg, Chairman, Pakistan Science Foundation, for steering the progression of technical activities of the webinar within the allocated time frame. Finally, on behalf of the organizing committee, I once again thank the Chief Guest of the webinar, Her Excellency, Zardar Gul Wazir Saiba. I once again repeat my deep appreciations and acknowledgments of the hard work and the efforts of all those who participated and contributed in successful organization of this webinar at the Pakistan Academy of Sciences, Pakistan, Zindabad, and may Allah bless you all. Thank you. Let me go now to the first technical session. The session was supposed to be chaired by Dr. Shahid Beg, who is the President of Pakistan, <coughs> Chairman of Pakistan Science Foundation, but because of some unavoidable engagement, he at the moment is not with us. Nevertheless, I think we can get started. Maybe Sabda Khan, you would kindly come over and take the session. I thank you all for tolerating me for 45 minutes. Thank you. It's always a pleasure that you are doing the things and uh, do it really nicely and uh, because being a boss, so we all have, uh, you know, <laughs> Keeping time. The recording has stopped. This meeting is being recorded. Uh, if anyone has objection for recording these statements, you know when I was praising you, they warned us that it's being recorded, so we have to be careful. Now, uh, what I'm going to do is, uh, Professor Shahid Beg is on his way. Uh, I will just take five minutes because I have already uh, was scheduled to say five minutes, uh, some more things. Uh, is he, uh, so. Uh, he is already uh, here. Uh, I want him to listen, uh, Professor Shahid Beg, and then uh, we'll hand it over to him. Uh, what I was talking to you, little three, four more slides so that Shahid Beg, uh, uh, being my, I don't know whether he was senior or junior to me when we were uh, young students, uh, but still we have some very great relationship. So we paid a price as well as the, the story continues. We paid a price 100 years back. When, defy, when we defy lockdown, when there were some ceremonies in America and they said no count, enough is enough, and then there, uh, millions of people died. Next please. So, what? Now, uh, just a couple of slides and then I request Shahadeh to me. What Shahadeh you have to take? Uh, please, uh, mute all the lines that they have. So, what we now need to do is that lockdown is one thing, but scientists, they have a role with the society. Because scientists, the way that they use the language, that is inspiration. The, the policy maker talk about hard rules, enforcement, punishment, all this. Scientists are... Oh, the are Please do the second thing is, we also are, uh, uh, the Academy of Sciences and Kargazam University both, jointly, we are working for the conduct of uh, scientists, and that is integrity. Uh, this is not only for data fabrication, falsification, plagiarism, but other than that, quality and relevance of their science with the time. And that is today what we need scientists to do for us, to take us out of this pandemic whether they are mathematicians, whether they are artificial intelligence science, whatever. So that is what we do. And then harmonization and enforcement of standard of conduct. 
So what I'm doing, I'm requesting you all, the young today, Professor Kim, we have a very good physical participation here. Uh, today they are not doing much of the camera, now they have. So you can see the young people, they, what they want to, to listen from us and they will be the ambassador, manager of change when they go back to their society. So that's what I expect from you. Next please. Uh, a couple of ideas for the scientists, what we call it new tricks with old drugs. Uh, there were many occasions in the, in the history of human being when drugs were invented for something. They were not useful for their disease in many cases, but later on, decades later, the same drug was used for other things. And they were much, much better. And I have given you some of the examples here that it happened. And there's a global market of $30 billion for such drugs that are used for other purposes. And what is this for Corona now? Because Corona is a new uh, thing that we have. So there were four antiviral drugs that were tested this time. This was not for Corona. This was for other, uh, like for uh, hydrocolicule, for malaria, for HIV, there were drugs, and many other drugs that were used. But they have a problem with these four drugs that they were immune suppressing steroids, like just uh, uh, dexamethasone. So there were problems with US, and then what happened was there were many trials over there. They, now the WHO has asked for three more experiments for the old drugs with the new drugs, and probably we will be lucky and if it succeeds. And the names I have mentioned one is for rheumatoid arthritis, the other one is for viral infiltration, the other one is for inflammatory, basically. But this will hopefully work, and recently we received a letter from uh, Kaidas University Vice Chancellor from ANSO, where the country is leading them. They have uh, another new drug, uh, antiviral drug, they want us to try, and we are uh, collaborating in clinical trials. Next, please. So, the, uh, just the last line, and then I hand it over the whole thing to Shahid Beksa, and that is that we have to have other kind of surveillance. The rich countries are doing it. Sometimes we have asymptomatic people, they don't test. So, but with sewerages, like, uh, you know, this eminent airline, they check the sewerage of the plane, the, the water that comes from the toilet, and they know whether asymptomatic COVID patient was on board or not. And then they do it accordingly. So same is happening in Germany with the students, dormitories and hospitals, they check the sewerage. So, and then Pakistan too, our, uh, one of our universities doing this project. So I, I recommend to my young scientists who have new ideas and do new things. With these few words, uh, Professor Shahid Bey, uh, who is the chairman of Pakistan Science Foundation now, a lucky uh, uh, man because he is, uh, I don't know sir, you were senior or junior to me when we were students. My gray hair says you were junior, but uh, actually you seem to be senior to me. He's here and uh, he remained, uh, he's a great human geneticist, uh, I know him since childhood almost, and uh, remained in Nipchi, our uh, one of the premier organizations of the country several publications. He worked with the Afghan University also. He was nominated as vice chancellor also, but he preferred to be a scientist and help scientist. So, sir, over to you. You will uh, have to come to the stage if you like, and you have to conduct the whole session. We will ask you when the time finishes that, sir, the next session is going on, and you have to be strict about the time. Uh, there is some brief information about the speakers with you, and that's all that we will hand it over to you, and then we will talk to you when everything finishes. Uh, this one? We finish this session and then we will. Shall I take you uh, after you have to I can guide you from here also. You can come here, you can ask that mic or here as you wish, and you can take it over. Just one announcement uh, that we have a special poster session of the, after this session, there will be a tea break also after that. Uh, after this session, then we have a tea break, and then we have a poster session. President of ASA has donated 500 US dollar for the best prize of the poster. We will decide if the best is one, goes to one person. If there are two, three, it will be divided for a second, third prize, which we normally do with a gold medal from Academy and with a certificate. So lucky presenters 